This here is the portable soldering iron that I've made in the past video tutorial, so make sure you watch that video as well. Since then I've made a few improvements, and now I have the new board with different components and I would like to tell you about the improvements of this project, show you the new board and build the new soldering iron. But before, make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell to see my future videos. So guys, let's see what new things I've added to the board and if this new version is better. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. This is the iron from the past tutorial. The board and the schematic are pretty good and I had no problems with those. But the main problem was the tip. The soldering tip that I've used for this project is from a low cost 24 volts soldering iron like this one. It is a 50 watts iron, so I thought it would be quite good. But it reaches 400 degrees inside on the heating element, but on the outside it's still not hot enough to melt solder well. So the heat transfer between the heating element and this metal tip is horrible, and also the metal tip itself is bad quality. You have to wait for too long and also put the maximum temperature of 480 degrees in order to heat up and then it's just bad quality. But thanks to you guys I've upgraded this project to another low cost tip, but much much better. This is the T12 tip made for the Hakko 912 station. This tip is very good quality, heats up very fast and has a good heat transfer. In just seconds you could melt solder with some decent power. But it also has a disadvantage. It only has two connectors so the thermocouple and the heating element are in series. So reading the temperature is not that easy anymore, so I had to change a little bit the main circuit. If you remember, in the past version, I've used a thermocouple amplifier, the MAC6675, to read the temperature. That chip is specially made for thermocouple read and with the correct library for K-type thermocouples you could get good temperature read. But now we have to use an operational amplifier with the correct gain and then read the voltage drop across the connectors of the T12 tip. Before I show you how I've made everything let's just inspect the new board and see what it has new. Once the final schematic was made, I've selected convert to PCB and then I've placed each component where I want it and best fit it. After I routed all the tracks and run the design rule check. I created the Gerbers for the PCB manufacturer. You have the final Gerbers files for this board below if you want to order the same and remember that from GLC PCB you could get 10 of these for $2. Download the zip file with the Gerbers that I've made. I go to GLC PCB and I select code now for the $2 offer and I upload the zip file. In a moment I get a quick inspection of the board and I'm able to select different settings. Like for example the color, in this case blue. Now the $2 offer is only for green color since that is mass produced. I finish, I place the order and then I receive the boards here in Spain in around 8 days without using DHL services, just normal mail. Ok so on the top side I don't have the Atmega chip anymore, it's now on the bottom side. But now we can see that the push buttons are not in the middle anymore, they are on the sides, so more space for other components on the PCB and also it is easier to push those buttons. So I had to use these 90 degrees push buttons. Next we have place for a buzzer that will be used for short signal sounds like when getting into sleep mode or starting up. If you don't want that you could simply not solder that component. Now here we have place for a special component that I had to try. This is a so called vibration sensor. It is just a small tube with a metal spring inside that when it vibrates it will create a contact between two pins. So it will act just like a button, but instead of pushing it, it will be activated by vibrations. I will use this component to get out of the sleep mode when vibrations are detected. If the iron is placed on the table and no vibration is detected for minutes, it will automatically enter the sleep mode. And it will get out when I move the iron. Ok so for the rest of the top side, we still have the I2C OLED display the 16MHz crystal for the microcontroller 
and the space for the pack converter like this one, so we could get 5 volts from 24 volts main input. On the bottom side, we have the chip of course, and the MOSFET, and also 3 clips. These clips are used to fix in place the T12 iron tip, just like this, so we could even remove it later if we want. This clip here has nothing connected to it, it is just used for support. And these two are positive and negative connections from the thermocouple and the heating element. Now this small component here is the LM359 operational amplifier. It will be used to amplify the voltage drop from the thermocouple and then read that with the analog input of the Admega chip and by that get the temperature value. Here we have 4 small pads for clock, MISO, reset and MOSI connections for the SPA port in case we need to burn a new bootloader to the chip. See the past video in order to know how to do that. Finally, we have the ward pins so we could program the board using this FTDA programmer that you could buy for like $1 on eBay. Ok, so I won't show you the entire process, but I've soldered everything in place. Make sure you see the dot on each component in order to know which one is the first pin. Then follow all the values in the schematic for the resistors and capacitors. And very important, before placing it on the PCB, check the back converter output and set it to be around 5 volts and then glue the potentiometer so it will stay at that value. Ok, so now that I have everything in place, it's time to program and make a lot of tests with this board. The most difficult thing is get the precise read from the thermocouple. As you can see here in the schematic of this circuit, the sensing op-amp is connected just after the RF540 MOSFET. So in order to read the voltage drop on the thermocouple, we first need to turn off the MOSFET. That's why here in the code, on the read temperature function, we first turn off the MOSFET, give a small delay so the voltage settles, and then we read the analog input from the amplifier and we do that each time we want to read the temperature. Another problem is how to pass from voltage to temperature. Well, what I've made was connect the output from the operational amplifier to my Arduino with an OLED screen and then I heat up the tip. I make sure that the thermocouple is touching the tip with a bit of solder. So each 20 degrees or so, I get the temperature using my multimeter and also the analog read for each value from the OLED screen. Then I've made a graph with those values in Excel and I get the linear regression. And this was the function for that line. So now I place this function in my code, but instead of the Y variable I have the temperature and instead of the X variable I have the analog read. Here I have a time lapse of all the temperature values. You should do it from high temperature to low temperatures. It's easier that way since the temperature will drop slowly. It's not the best way to do this, but I've got a decent temperature read, and I've compared that with an external thermocouple. The error is just a few degrees. So you might want to change this function if you use a different type of thermocouple. Now the rest of the code is pretty much the same. We use the buttons to increase or decrease the set point of the temperature, then the PID will control the power applied to the MOSFET. If we push the two buttons at the same time, we will get into sleep mode or just leave the iron on the table without moving it for 5 minutes and it will get into sleep mode as well. You could change these 5 minutes to any other value if you want here in these variables. I've changed a bit the animations for the OLED screen and now for the PID control I'm using a pre-made library instead of my own code. That will make the code simpler and shorter. Please read all the comments in the code to understand more and make sure you download and install all the needed libraries. Ok guys, so I upload the final code and I made some tests at 20 volts. The iron gets hot pretty fast and it has way more power than the older version. It is very stable due to the new PID algorithm. Here I have connected the MOSFET to my oscilloscope. We can see that when heating up, the PID changes the PWM width and when the temperature is reached, it will stay at low value. But if I put a wet sponge, the temperature drops and the PID increases in order to keep the same temperature. And it will stay steady, the PID is very good. I can easily reach 480 degrees. I can melt even big balls of solder. 
I could also thin thick wires with no problems. Solder over big copper boards and for small components, well, it works with no problems. Here is a demo of how it works. We plug the cable and it starts in sleep mode. Press any button and you will hear a beep. And then it will start heating up. Now long press any of the buttons to increase or decrease the temperature set point. Long press both buttons and it will enter into sleep mode and it will exit the sleep mode if any of the button is pressed. Also, leave it flat on the table for 5 minutes and it will enter into a different kind of sleep mode. Now if I poke it just a little bit, it will get out of the sleep mode automatically due to the vibration sensor and that's it. Ok guys, so I guess that you have seen these ugly solder components here on the top of the MOSFET. That's because I've made some errors in the layout but don't worry, the Gerbers you can download below already have that fixed. The buck converter board must be flipped and the BJT driver for the MOSFET had different pads. I should 3D print a case for this new one, but since I'm waiting for the corrected boards to arrive, I won't do that yet. So guys, there you have it the second version of the portable soldering iron and now that I've made more tests, I'm planning on the third version. I found this smaller buck converter. This one is like half size of the old one, so the board could get way smaller. Also I'm planning to use the Atmega chip without the 16 MHz crystal and that will give me more space and also use a smaller MOSFET or maybe an IGBT. My main size problems are the DC connector and these metal clips. These are clips for fuses and I couldn't find any different type of clips, ones that are not this high. If you know some metal PCB clips that I could use, please post those in the description of this video. So guys, stay tuned for future updates of this project. You have the Gerbers, the part list, codes and the schematic below the description of this video and on my webpage electronoops.com. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that you have learned something new, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell in order to see my future videos, and also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.